G'day there, it's Dave here, Dave Mills, with another very interesting, superb uh, discussion. Uh, and uh, we see here in this position, in problem number 18, we see that uh, uh, black has uh, the knight at e4 versus a loose, which is semi-loose, seen at e4, and then we have the knight at h4, which is completely loose. We also see the bishop and queen momentum, which is very, very strong here. Now, obviously it could be the other way around, threatening mate, but this is just as strong. We also see that white has the knight at a4, so it has the knight on the other side of the board. We also see that black's position is very, uh, you know, uh, centralized. And uh, we also see in this position, I've been in situations like this for white actually, where you got the bishop at uh, b2 and it's hitting its own pawn, but that instead of bringing the knight to e5, uh, for some crazy reason, knight to h4, which uh, doesn't work, it doesn't have anywhere to go, can't go to f5, you know, going to e5 is so much stronger here, you know, so much more active here, and uh, so. In this position here, um, White has uh, let let the fox in the hen house, okay? Let the guana in the shed and chicken coop, and that's it. Uh, and uh, so, how can uh, uh, Black actually, you know, it's got the queen, it's got the bishop, it's knight, it's got three pieces, and uh, how can it take advantage of this situation? Well, for starters, uh, the king can't be checked by the knight because the king is on a, the opposite color uh, to the knight. So we've got to force it to the same color for there to be a check. Also, uh, the um, g3 has been weakened by the advancing of the h4 pawn. So g3 is quite weak, and uh, we have the rook and the queen. They're obviously misaligned. They are on the same color as the knight, so they can be forked, and they are close enough, and... Uh, they, they're all the queen and the rook are misaligned because I mean or if if there was a light squared bishop for black obviously the queen could be skewered to the rook but that that misalignment's not you know it's only a weakness if it can be exploited so we have the barrage and we have the knight and we have the weak g3 point and we have the king at the moment can't be exploited and we have the loose knight so we have the weak g3 you know rigid square we have the loose knight, completely loose knight. We have the king uh, potentially uh, could be checked uh, here by the bishop, and we have uh, h2 has become weak. And uh, you know, so we have multiple things that we need to target and need to look at. Now, if you play knight g3 immediately, uh, obviously the f pawn can just lob it off. Uh, so it's it's not, you know, it's not really much of a, the knight is not much of a threat here. But after, check the checks, they could be made, you know, we need to check the checks. After bishop to h2 check, king to h1 is the only move. It's forcing, it's tempo gaining. And what we've actually done is put the king on the same color as the knight. Now there's a significant misalignment at g3. Now the king, the rook, the queen is under threat. They're all that talk. To pro now we need to, to take advantage of that knight, that powerful centralized knight. To take advantage of it, we need to get the knight to g3. Well, how this can be exploited is the bishop can... Uh, can move to g3 itself. It can sacrifice itself. That ex type 5 explosive energy. And uh, I just want to just sort of get to this point where you have the the point at f2 now is actually now under threat by the bishop and the knight. That the resultant forces, the torque, and you know is being applied to f2, and also that loose knight. So. Uh, also, that f pawn is a huge target. In fact, the f pawn is the real big target here because uh, of that misalignment between the king, the rook, and the queen. So, because uh, you force the king, and once now you're threatening that knight and you're threatening the f pawn. 
So if the knight actually plays back to f3 after its misadventure to h4, uh, what do you do? What do you do? Buckle your shoe. I'll give you a second to think about it. Because uh, in my experience, beginners often miss these opportunities because they, they actually don't uh, appreciate uh, putting pieces on, you know, squares, forcing, you know, def deflecting that king over, moving that king over to uh, h1 was critical in this position. And uh, so, because now g3 is, is able to be attacked with a check. So, say you save the knight, you've saved the knight, knight to f3, what do you do? Okay, bishop takes f2. Boom. Why is this such a such a such a devastating move? Okay, and the reason is because after rook takes bishop, knight to g, finally to g3, check, and now you've lost the queen. Okay, so uh, obviously rook takes uh, is <laughs> is 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 a, is a bad idea, um, but uh, also the queen's coming crashing through as well. So it's only going to get worse. <laughs> Uh, it's only going to get worse for uh, the position uh, for white. So uh, I hope that uh, I, I hope I haven't over-explained this position to you too much, and uh, I hope that you got a lot of enjoyment out of this problem. Uh, so uh, let's have a look at it from the, the physics point of view. We have the, the momentum of that bishop and that queen coming crashing through on those dark squares. So uh, the, the queen and the bishop combine. The queen, the, the queen is nine, the bishop is three and a half. So that's 12 and a half. And uh, also to, to understand how to misalign their pieces, how you, you if you're gonna fork their pieces, they've gotta be on the same color as your knight. And uh, also understanding that G3 is now semi-loose because it's only protected by the F-pawn and the weakness of that knight at uh, H4 is quite significant here. So obviously that's a minor cog that's attracting your pieces. Uh, the F-pawn uh, is a terrible defender uh, because if it does take the bishop at G3, then check and you're going to win the queen. So the weakness at G3, it's a loose knight. Uh, the weakness at f2, misaligning the king, all those things all combine. Remember, uh, with resultant forces, it's uh, you know it's often one piece to sacrifice. It's that 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 type five energy. It's often often you have to 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 bust in. You've got to be looking for for that to go forward. And the bishop is able to connect. Uh, is able to potentially open up g3, it's able to attack that loose knight and f2, and uh, it's just uh, crushing, it's a crushing attack. And because uh, obviously, after rook takes uh, the uh, uh, king, <laughs> uh, rook takes the king gets checked, knight to g3, and uh, so that's the weakness of moving the pawn to h3. And if you can provoke that, that can be very good. I also like to say here that uh, we've got the bad bishop on white's side because it's trapped behind its pawns. It wants to be in front of its structure. It's got knights on either end of the board and uh, black is much more centralized and its pawns in front of the king are, aren't disturbed and its back rank is strong. So, and that barrage with the bishop and the queen is just beautiful momentum all crashing through. And instead of the bishop being the hero, it was actually the knight, and the fact is the king can't go anywhere. You're, you're forcing him into that misalignment. So if you just play bishop to g3, you could, after pawn takes, knight takes, you'd win the rook and pawn for uh, you know the bishop and knight, and it's just it's just not worth it in the middle game. Um, and uh, so uh, I would also like to say in this position here, uh, finally. Uh, we see the difference between centralization versus uh, playing on the fl flanks. You can play on the flanks, particularly with your pawns, uh, when uh, uh, the center is closed. 
and control. We see here that the center is quite, quite static, quite closed. And we can see the advantage of that strong piece, that knight in the center. It's just absolutely devastating. And, and the fact is, um, black's uh, really only bad piece, I would say, so far is the rook at uh, a8 is not so good. But that can be remedied very quickly. So there you go. I hope you uh, enjoyed the position. I hope you enjoyed the talk. Press the doobie doos, subscribe, do all the cool stuff and leave comments and uh, share this uh, video. Uh, I'm only just starting out, so I need all the help I can get. Okay, thank you so much. All right, bye.